You're watching West Hartford Community Television. You're watching West Hartford Community Television. For the community, by the community. watching Life and Style with Sarah. On tonight's show, we're talking about youth mentoring. What's the need, what are the benefits, and how can you help? My guests this evening are Dan Blanchard. He is the award-winning author, speaker, and he's an educator, as well as a two-time junior Olympian wrestler and two-time junior Olymp Olympian wrestling coach. He's taught social studies in Connecticut's largest inner city high school, and in addition, he was chosen by the American Federation of Teachers as the face and voice of educational reform. Thank, Thank you, you for joining me. Carol Wilkes is to my right. She is the West Hartford School Community and Business Partnership Coordinator and leads the West Hartford Public Schools Mentor Program. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. And then last, we have Emily Huen. She is a senior at Conard High School and leads the peer mentoring program for high school students. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. So before we get into it, I want to um, read off some statistics that were actually on the brochure for the mentoring program in West Hartford. 25% uh, of Connecticut youth face challenges that place them at risk for poverty, health, family, or other serious problems. There's a critical shortage of mentors, especially male and minority mentors. And the youth who have few resources, such as lack of family support, living in poverty, and low mo motivational level, benefit the most from mentoring. So I'm mm. going to throw the first question to you, Dan. Oh, thank you, Sarah. <laughs> in, your, in your work experience um, and your experience, you do, you've written some books on, on leadership. Mm -hmm. You speak to adults as well as teens about yep. leadership mm -hmm. and have worked as a mentor, as a coach. What have you seen in your work that, that kind of supports this data, that the importance of mentoring and, and how these youth are at risk? All right, thank you, Sarah. Uh, as you mentioned, I'm an inner city school teacher. And unfortunately, in the inner city, a lot of these kids don't have role models. You know, and the stuff they're seeing on TV, you know, with the reality stars or mm -hmm. some of the sports yeah. stars or, you know, the ones that are behaving badly. You know, these are like the people that they're looking up to. And they're not the right people mm -hmm. to look up to. So particularly in the inner city, there's such a need for mentoring in the inner city. I mean, uh, you know, these are our children. And these children need us. Uh, but it's not just in the inner city. It's all over. It's everywhere. Uh, you know, they said that there's two ways to learn and learn quickly, and that's to make massive mistakes or to get mentored. And yeah. I think mentoring sounds a little less painful yeah. you know, than, than yes. making massive mistakes. So we could all use mentoring. I, I get mentored. You know, I have a mentor, and I'm not a kid anymore. Mm -hmm. So it would help every one of us. Right. Mm. So now, Carol, um, so we've got the, the inner city side of it, and mm -hmm. then you think about West Hartford, and I think some of, some of us refer to it as the West Hartford bubble, mm -hmm. but there's need out there. Absolutely. Um, so with a seemingly well-off town that wins lots of awards for a great place to live, great schools, what do you see as far as the need right here in West Hartford for mentoring? Who are, who are our at-risk youth here? Um, well, I'm not sure that it's necessarily for just at-risk students. Okay. Um, Personally, I agree with him. I think everyone needs a mentor, so every student can benefit in West Hartford. Okay. Um, our program focuses on students who, for one reason or another, don't have a positive role model in their life. Um, but again, um, that doesn't necessarily mean they're at risk. Okay. So the stereotype that you might think of as kids that need a mentor might be, you know, a broken family, mm -hmm. might be from the inner mm -hmm. city, might, yeah. might be really uh, facing some devastating home life problems. Mm -hmm. But that's not necessarily the case. No. So, so t yeah. what, what do some of these kids look like? What, what well, might be their needs? Well, I tell you, if you just look at, like, the greatest sports athletes in the world, they all have coaches. And those coaches are like their mentors. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying so I mean it's hard to put it down like you know what this person looks like right. because it's it's anybody you know I, I agree that there's a huge need in the inner city particularly with the boys 
Mm. You know, uh, there's a huge need with them. I agree with that. But it's hard to, to peg it down to one like, image or one type of person that needs it because every one of us need this. I said the greatest athletes in the world have coaches slash mentors. So what about, um, what about age? So I guess, well, you've covered that a little bit by saying yeah. everybody, but when we're talking about youth and, and youth needing mentors, what, mm. you know, what, does that fall in a particular age range? Does okay. that, do you well, I, I think our youth today are facing a lot. You know, there's, there's a lot on their plate. There's a lot expected of them. And, and some of them are not prepared to be facing this challenge. And if we can get these, uh, you know, these kids mentors, we can take years off of their uh, growth cycle, you know, their learning cycle. We can knock years off of that. We can get them to where they're supposed to be. Carol, in the brochure for the <coughs> mentoring program, it talks about helping kids reach their potential. Mm -hmm. So talk a little bit about that. What is that, how, how does mentoring and you're talk, you're alluding to that as well. How does mentoring help kids get to where they need to be to be successful? Um, well, it's an additional support for them. Mm -hmm. um, it's not a mom or a dad figure. Mm -hmm. It's more of a friend who is willing to listen to them, um, help them in whatever they need to do to be successful. And our program is K-12, so we have students in kindergarten through 12th grade. Okay. And so how are those... How are those kids identified? What is there a process? Is there? Um, there are a variety of ways. Mm -hmm. It could be a teacher. It could be a parent asking. Um, it could be a guidance counselor. Um, so there are a variety of ways that students find their way into the mentor program, and even a student can ask. Okay. And I guess you know one of the things that I wondered as I was thinking about this topic was um, if a child. Let's say uh, someone in the school school thinks that they they need some additional assistance. They they could use that friend right. on their, their that extra friend on their side, that adult role model. Um, how does that play out with the family? Would that does that make the family feel like somehow they've failed that their child needs a mentor? Is it um, how how does that work? Um, I don't think so at all. I think that most families. Um, would invite that extra support into their life. Mm -hmm. um, our program takes place on school grounds, um, so the mentors come into the school, mm -hmm. um, but all our parents do have to provide permission um, for that relationship to begin. Okay, okay. And then, um, now you had, so, so of the kids that West Hartford deals with, are there, you know, are boys more in need than girls? Are there more younger kids that need mentors than older kids? Is it kind of mixed? What does it look like? Uh, well, for the most part, it's younger students. Um, we see a trend where we have several elementary students on the wait list. And then when we finally pair them up with a mentor, um, they sort of make it through middle school. Mm -hmm. And then they may decide, mm, I don't necessarily mean this, but we do have matches that continue through the high school. And those are our true success stories. Okay. And um, now you were, Dan, you were talking about kids facing so many challenges. Yeah. Can, you, can you be a little bit more specific on what some of those challenges might be? Sure. Um, you know, with the 21st century skills and the global competition, the global economy, I mean, you're not competing with the kids sitting next to you in the classroom. Mm -hmm. You could be competing with kids on the other side of the world. And those kids may have more support, more structure, more discipline than, you know, than what you're used to. So they may be ahead of you when it comes down to job competition, or at least the job competition you're going to be facing. Is the goal of mentoring to prepare them for entering college? Entering, what is the goal? What is a successful mentoring relationship what, for well, our, our youth? Our program is a social program. Okay. Um, so starting out in elementary school, it looks very different than when it gets to the high school. So in the elementary school, they play games, they share, they listen. In middle school, they may begin to work on computers, do projects. And then at the high school level, it truly becomes almost um, a person who I would call like a career mentor. 
okay. who you know may research colleges with the student and helps prepare them for the next step. And um, many of our students who are in the mentor program um, don't necessarily have that support at home. Okay. So it's very helpful for them to have an additional advocate in their life. So it might be a child whose parents maybe didn't go to college and don't know, don't even know where to begin to usher them through that process exactly. and that mentor could help mm -hmm. them with that information. Right. Okay. Well, I think the relationship with the teacher or an adult and the school building makes a big difference mm -hmm. there. You know, it could be a, a lunch person, it could be a custodial staff, it could be an administrator, a coach. You know, it's that relationship with an adult in that building that could change that kid's life and get the kid into the mentoring program. A lot of kids will have trouble going on their own. But if they have an adult that cares about them and encourages them to go to the mentoring program, you know, such as being, it's being offered over at West Hartford, I mean, that, that's a game changer to have an adult like that. And I think that, you know, families would be proud and, and, and happy and grateful that an adult took interest in their kid and got their kid going the right way. So how does, how does that change the game? How does having that adult presence change the game for those kids? Like what, is, it, is it just the relationship or what is there, uh, you know, um, some evidence of what it is that those adults are providing that's helping those kids? Um, well, I think it's, just being a caring individual who, who really takes an interest in them. So it's a one-on-one -on -one where they don't necessarily have to share that with anyone else. You know, it may be a student who has five brothers and sisters and doesn't get that kind of attention at home. Or it may be a single parent who, you know, doesn't have a dad in the house. So mm -hmm. I think it's really all about a caring relationship okay. and, and providing mm -hmm. that additional support that the student needs in order to take the steps necessary to be successful. So I looked up the definition of a mentor. Oh. I figured that'd be a good place to start, right? <laughs> hey, so, not, right? <laughs> so the definition of a mentor is an experienced and trusted advisor. Mm -hmm. So how, how long does it take to build that relationship? Or, I mean, it, mm. it seems like you kind of pair these folks together and then you know, if it's not something that evolved, like maybe you built a relationship over time in your elementary school, maybe it was someone yeah. on the staff or something, how, how is that trust built? What is that relationship, how does that relationship evolve? Well, they meet on a weekly basis okay. and we do try and um, match interest with interest. So okay. um, we do look at, you know, what the students' um, hobbies are or interests mm -hmm. and we, we do try and find people who have similar likes um, so that they have a base to build on. Okay. And, you know, how it happens, I mean, people become friends, and um, mm -hmm. I guess that's really what happens. I mean, I was a mentor, and my mentee, um, we met the first year, and it was a little awkward at first, mm -hmm. um, but then we truly became friends, and mm -hmm. it was great. Yeah, I mean, we're social creatures. Right. I mean, we all want to <laughs> be liked. Right. You know, yeah. sometimes <laughs> just, just the proximity <laughs> of, uh, let's say, the, the adults from the West Hartford Public School System setting us up and putting the, the mentee and the mentor in the same proximity, getting together with social creatures who want to be liked. Those things work out, but they don't happen, so, you know, most of the time they don't happen by themselves. Mm -hmm. So a mentor program to encourage those things to happen is golden. Okay. And, um, I guess before we talk about the teen mentoring program, um, I think as thinking about becoming a mentor, if you're, you know, as I was thinking, well, if I was to become a mentor, what would be the things that I would be thinking about? And it seems like it's a, it's a responsibility to this child that probably ha may have some significant needs in their mm -hmm. lives, may have mm -hmm. some significant things going on at home. I mean, it may be not quite that, you know, uh, at risk, but, but uh, you know, they, they obviously they need someone. Um, what do you say to someone who's feeling like, oh, gosh, can I, can anybody be a mentor? Like, can I handle yeah. that? What yeah. if something comes up that's really, that I've never had yeah. to deal with? Mm -hmm. What, what is your experience it, it with that or me. your advice to people it, who sorry, are nervous? Sort of, it sort of reminds me of like that Big Brother's ad you see on TV with the, with the guy missing the baskets and getting everything wrong and like, hey, you don't have to be perfect. You know, you just yeah. got to just gotta just be, be there you. and care. Mm -hmm. And it's the same thing with mentoring. I mean, none of us are perfect, and we don't have to be perfect. And if we're just, you know, if we're just in the life mm -hmm. of a child and just spending some time in the life of a child and just listening, 
that's going to make a huge difference. So anybody could do it. So it's, there aren't, you know, certain things you're trying to convey to the, the child or lessons or oh, no. goals or it's just spending, as simple as spending time together. One hour a week. Wow. So let's talk a little bit about the teen mentoring program in West Hartford. Emily, do you want to tell us about what, what your role in that is and, and how it works? Um, so I got involved with the teen mentoring program and basically what uh, the school does is they'll match me up with a student from either the middle school or the elementary school in West Hartford and when we get matched up we'll find out like a time that works for us in our schedules where we can meet up and talk or anything like that so so do you so this is during school hours oh no um, it depends um, whenever the mentor and the mentee are free like I um, I met with my mentee after school on Wednesdays because that's when I was free and she was too. Mm -hmm. So we would coordinate a time that would work for the both of us. So we would meet then. And um, is it similar protocol where you meet at the school? or Yes, we meet at the school. Um, usually it's like after school or something, like my mentee will wait around and I'll... I'll come over and we'll just talk at school, you know, find like a classroom or anything mm -hmm. where we can just hang out. No, no like threatening environments, you know, just like, like a classroom. It's like comfortable. And what has been your experience as far as um, kind of what you're, what you talk about and what your relationship, I mean, not, we don't want details, we don't <laughs> want anything private <laughs> shared, but, yeah. you know, are you playing games? Are you, have you found that some kind of significant issues have come up? Are you, um, well, do you know of it? You know, does that happen in your experience? Yeah, um, I, I had an older uh, mentee. She was in middle school. And so the, it's kind of different than when you, um, when your mentee is in elementary school. There's like more, you know, like social type of mm -hmm. like problems and things like that. So what we would do is I would like, you know, ask her about her day and, you know, just like really listen. And mm -hmm. I wouldn't try to push any advice onto her or anything like that because, you know, like people, different people have different experiences, but just being, um, just being there and like um, listening, being like a compassionate mm -hmm. person, trying to um, understand their emotions, where it comes from, and just being a friend, it really helps. And so certain things have come up and um, the way that I would deal with them is like um, I would ask her like, how she feels about it, you know, and um, if, she, if she didn't feel comfortable telling me, you know, that's fine too. But we would just kind of talk about it and flush out like any emotions that she felt and like just listening is like a really big mm -hmm. help. Mm -hmm. So even with the adult mentoring program if if a significant issue does come up I mean mm -hmm. if something that just you feel you feel really needs like this is too much for me to try and advise or to handle what is the process for handling that kind um, of situation? We have a site coordinator at every school okay um, so a point person who you know monitors the relationships is there for the mentors um, whenever they need to talk um, I'm at the district level so um, they would know better, but they mm -hmm. can always contact me as well, mm -hmm. and we're all willing to help. So there's someone they can go to to, to, to right. say this came up. Mm -hmm. I think you know this needs attention beyond my absolutely. Either help me take care of it or help me find resources to right. to deal with it. Okay, you said something interesting, Emily. You said I'm not there to give advice necessarily, and that's interesting because I would. And maybe because I'm a parent, I feel like I'm mm. always giving advice. Mm. <laughs> and maybe that's not always the right thing to do. <laughs> but that's interesting. Do you all have any thoughts on that as far as whether a mentor's role is to give advice or to just listen and not, and purposely to try to not give uh, advice? I think you can't go wrong by listening. Mm -hmm. I think that's what they need more so than anything else. It's just someone to listen to them. Uh, you know, if they feel that they've been heard, mm -hmm. then they will come back to you. Mm -hmm. with more. So yeah. you want to make sure that, you know, they've been heard and sometimes, you know, they would just work their own problems out mm -hmm. just by talking to you and they walk away and they kind of know now what they got to do, you know, and every once in a while we throw like a little bit of advice in there, you know, mm -hmm. that's, that's okay too. You know, you might want to phrase it like, you know, just something to think about, you right. know, 
hypothetically or whatever, just something to think about. And just uh, lots of times they'll solve their own problems by just having somebody that they can just talk to. And I guess this is, is if, you're, if you are already a parent and you become a, a mentor, mm -hmm. how do you, do you advise, talk a little bit about the training. So do you advise the mentors to, you're not there to parent them, you're there to be a friend. How do you manage that? During the training, we tell them exactly what they are not. <laughs> and so what is a and mentor is a not? <laughs> okay. It is not a parent at all. Okay. Um, really, it is a coach, an advisor, uh, bottom line, like a friend, an advocate. Mm -hmm. um, so someone who is in the student's corner, mm -hmm. um, but they have a parent, mm -hmm. and they don't need another one. So it's definitely um, a different relationship. And as he said, um, listening is key. Um, I'm not sure that we promote mentors giving advice all the time. Mm -hmm. um, what we would ask is that the mentor help the student process the decision so they feel good about what, the, you know, the final decision right. and not necessarily telling them what to do. Right. And some, and it sounds like maybe some situations, particularly maybe with the elementary school kids, it's not really problem solving, it's just spending time and focused time right. on that child mm -hmm. that may not be getting that. Exactly. Okay. And um, so for the West Hartford Mentoring Program, tell me, give me a few statistics. Like how many children and mentors, you know, how many mentor pairs, I guess, are there? Um, what are the needs? What are the, what is the backlog, I guess, or the wait list like? Um, right now we have about 100 matches. Um, we have some mentors who have taken on two students, mm -hmm. um, which is great. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are always in need of more, especially male mentors. Um, there tends to be more um, young males that need mentoring, mm -hmm. uh, more so than the younger females. Um, but we do have a pretty balanced program at this point. Okay. It's interesting, as I was kind of doing a little bit of background research for this program, Esquire magazine in October of this year, the entire issue is on mentoring, and it's specifically mm. actually addressing mentoring yeah. young men. Did you see that? I saw that, yes. Um, mm. Which I thought, that's really interesting, and I do feel like there's so much in the news about bad role models for kids, mm -hmm. and you talked a little bit about oh, yeah. this, Dan, that, that they're just, <coughs> and particularly young boys, are right. just seeing really bad uh, role models mm -hmm. out there. People behaving badly. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and so, um, I guess as a society, you know, there are mentor programs, but do you have any thoughts, just a bigger picture, of what we're, we should be teaching those kids, or what, how we can, I guess, not have that, such a negative impact on boys? I, I think boys? that one of the things that they have to know is that you know, they, they have to take some responsibility. Okay. That life is, in some ways, a do-it-yourself project. You know, if it's meant to be, it's up to me. We've all heard that. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you know, if you've got to get up a little bit earlier mm -hmm. to get to school or get to work, if you've got to stay up a little bit later to get your work done, you know, if you've got to work a little bit harder, then do it and stop making excuses of why you can't do it. You know, there are people that are in uh, way worse scenarios mm -hmm. than, than you that are doing it. You know, and those are the people that are going to be successful. So, I mean, if you're going to sit in the sideline of life and say, oh, look at them, look at them, and, you know, they're so lucky. No, they're not so lucky. They worked. They worked for it. They took responsibility. They took initiative, and mm -hmm. they worked for it. You know, and you can do that, too. Every kid can do that. And if you don't know how to get started, then go looking for an adult. Look for advice. Look for a mentor. You know, mm -hmm. start asking questions. Say, you know, I don't know what to do. I, I, I want to be more successful. You know what I'm saying? I want to do better in school. I want to do better on my sports team, or I want to have a better relationship with my home life. Right. You know, I mean, ask, start asking people what to do. And every one of us can do this, but you got to take some kind of an initiative. And you got to take some kind of responsibility. And those people that we're talking about, sir, that they're watching on TV yeah. and seeing in their lives and sometimes maybe seeing in their own homes, you know, they're seeing that people that are not doing this. Right. You know, they're behaving badly and they're not doing this. So that's where something like a mentoring or a caring adult, you know, it could be, it could be any caring adult, but a caring adult could make a big difference for this child. So talk, talk a little bit about how your book helps provide a little bit of mentoring to kids. 
Are they mm -hmm. geared towards kids to read it, or are they for adults to read for kids? Well, I wrote them for teens. For teens, and the, okay. the, the story is about a struggling teen, a tenth grader of the, the first book of the Granddaddy Secrets, Phil and Lucky, mm -hmm. is about a struggling tenth grader. And then the, the second book of Granddaddy Secrets, Phil and Good, the same teen, eleventh grade. Mm -hmm. And the third book of Granddaddy Secrets, Phil and Strong, is the same teen as a twelfth grader as he's getting ready to go and take on the great big world. So if you look at just the title of the first book, Phil and Lucky, mm -hmm. you know, like too often as an inner city teacher, I've heard, you know, I've seen kids just sitting back, like they don't have to do anything. You know, like they don't even bring a pencil to class some days. It's like, where's your pencil? Uh, I, don't, I don't need to do anything today. Mm -hmm. You know, no, no, you need a pencil, you need paper, you need to do your work. Well, no, I'm going to be a uh, basketball star someday. Okay, do you play on your high school basketball team? Well, well no. <laughs> How are you going to do that? You know, I'm going to be a big music star someday. Right. Okay, are you practicing like some kind of studio? Well, you know, where do you practice? Where do you? Well, no, I don't do that. Well, how are you going to do this? Right. You know, as you got like, what do you think you're just going to get lucky? Yeah. And a lot of kids today have like this this weird notion that that, that they're going to get lucky. And the thing is, you don't get lucky. Yeah. You know, the uh, rewards come to people who work. You know, luck has to be hard work meet an opportunity, or preparation meet an opportunity. And that way you create your own luck. Mm -hmm. So that's what that book is about. It's about taking the initiative, working hard, uh, preparing yourself for when you do get you know, that opportunity. Right. You create your own luck. And that's what pretty much all the books are about, is you gotta stop making excuses. Mm -hmm. You gotta stop blaming others. And once you, you realize that, once you learn that deeply, that this is a do-it-yourself project, then in many ways it liberates you. You know, you're no longer looking for people's permission to move forward with your life. Mm -hmm. You know, you're no longer looking for people's permission to, to, to do something, to get up off your butts and start moving. So it liberates you in many ways when you, when you, when you finally understand that. And unfortunately, a lot of our youth don't understand that. Right. You know, they're still waiting for their parents to do everything for them. Right. They're still waiting for their teachers to do everything for them. You know, they got to start taking some initiative and doing things for themselves and creating their own lucky breaks. So, um, I guess that leads us back to mentoring, where <laughs> an adult in, in a child's life can kind of help them, focus them along that path mm -hmm. of making, you know, working hard, achieving the things that they want to achieve. Um, if someone wants to be a mentor in West Hartford, mm -hmm. what do they do? Uh, they would call me. Okay. <laughs> so the phone number, we will have the phone number on the screen. Mm -hmm. Call Carol Wilkes. She will talk you through the process. There's training. Yes, there's a um, required training that has to take place. We require um, fingerprinting and background checks. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a bit of a process along with the application. Okay. And then Emily, if someone wants to be a peer-to-peer -peer mentor, do they hear about that at school? Yes. And um, also, some, some students have actually come up to me saying, like, oh, I want to be a peer mentor. Like, what can I do? And I'll, I'll guide them the right way. I'll be like, oh, talk to Miss Wilkes. She's, she's in the other building. You know, like, I'll, I'll help them out with that, too. So. Okay. And, Dan, if someone wants to read more about your books and all the other uh, mm. leadership programs that you run, how do they find that out? Oh, the easiest way to be go on my website okay. of granddaddysecrets.com. Okay. So they can just go on that, or they can Google Granddaddy Secrets or Google my name. Daniel Blanche, they can find my books there. Check it out. Great. Thank you, Dan. Thank well, you, you Carol. Thank, Thank you. you, Emily. Thank this you. has been a great conversation. I'm Sarah Connor. You've been watching Life in Style with Sarah. Don't forget to tune in next month to a brand new episode. As a nation, we need to invest in our young people. Let them know that they are full of potential. Now let's help them succeed, and mentoring can do that. Help your country by volunteering as a mentor to a young person in your community. You'll be glad you did. Mentoring works. Become a mentor.